Hi, I'm Fraser and this is Penny and this is Study Time's Level 2 Organic Chemistry Study Guide. So this standard is broken into a few key parts. We've got naming and drawing, we've got isomers, we've got solubility along with melting points and boiling points, there's reactions and polymers. You can expect explicit questions in all of these areas but also expect naming and reactions to pop out throughout the paper. So the first big thing for this paper is to get your naming down 100%. This is really the fundamental skill for organic chemistry and it's going to come up throughout the paper. So the first question is always uh, a naming and drawing type question, but you will have to do it tons of times throughout the paper. Make sure you get it down 100% because then you can focus your brain power on doing some of the harder stuff as opposed to wondering whether you're working with the right molecule. Don't forget, if you run out of examples from your workbook, you can always draw your own molecules. When drawing out molecules, it's useful to think about how many bonds each element is going to form. Carbon's going to form four, no more, no less. Nitrogen's going to form three, hydrogen's going to form one, and oxygen's are going to have two. When you're drawing hydrogens in class, it's pretty common not to draw out all the hydrogens. I get it, it's pretty boring. So when you're in the exam, just make sure that you put in all of the hydrogens. It's crucial for you to get the marks in the exam. So the big one now, reactions, the one that everyone freaks out over. So what I think is not helpful when you're learning organic reactions is to try and remember a lot of statements that sound like alcohol plus PCL3 goes to haloalkane. Right, not very, very helpful because you have to remember a hundred different statements that sound kind of the same. So one way that I would you know, I would recommend you, you organize your thoughts is more centered around uh, types of reaction, right? So, and then you can go through a list whenever you're encountered with a reaction, you can go through a list and think about, um, you know, what type of reaction this could possibly be. You know, addition reactions, you know, break carbon, carbon double bonds, you know, elimination reactions, use either H2SO4 concentrated or use alcoholic KOH. So if you're not using that, it's not an elimination reaction. Oxida oxidation reactions need permanganate or dichromate, so if you're not using that, it's not oxidation. Um, so by purely by logic, we can kind of rule out all the possibilities, and if we learn what each reaction is, what's happening in each reaction, then we can usually use logic to get to the answer instead of just kind of guessing. Um, so obviously that's just a really quick run through of that. Definitely hit up the study time organics guide for a much more in-depth walkthrough of that process. Um, but yeah, organic chemistry is not all about memorization, nothing to freak out about. So the Markotnikov and the Saitsev rules come up in every single exam. It's quite useful to know them as the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, but the examiners are most likely looking for a more specific definition. For example, instead of saying the rich get richer, you can say that the carbon with the more hydrogens will preferably get more hydrogens forming the major product. Another common question that you will get is the identification question. That's the one where they give you five different liquids and you have to tell the difference using chemistry. So it's quite useful to think of this in a visual way. If you get given um, one of them is an alkene and you mix it with acidified water, you're going to get alcohol and all of those are colourless uh, solutions. So it's more useful to think of visual things like oxidation reactions, bromine water or even litmus paper. When writing out your answers, it's good to be specific. So if you are putting blue litmus paper into all the different solutions, the one with that's ethanoic acid is going to turn red because it's an acid, while the other ones are all going to main, remain unchanged. Overall, pretty much everything comes down to naming and reactions. These concepts are not confined to a single question like identification or polymers, so it's really, really important to nail all of those concepts. While we've covered some important strategies, note that we haven't quite covered everything. We recommend going through three to four exam papers, check out the study time walkthrough guides and our checklists, and so you feel better for the exam. Thanks for watching and have fun in your organic chemistry exam.